In this laboratory exercise, we will practice with weight and volume measurements. We will start with measuring volume using the metric system. Volume tells us how much space something occupies. To measure volumes, we use liters, milliliters, and microliters. Half bottle of Coca-Cola is precisely one liter. Full bottle of Coca-Cola is two liters. Liter is abbreviated as capital L. There are about five liters of blood circulating in the average human adult body. One liter is equals 1,000 milliliters. Milliliters are abbreviated either as lowercase m and large case L, or lowercase m and lowercase l. Both abbreviations are acceptable, but most of the technical people use lowercase m and capital L for clarity. Milliliter is a very small amount, as you can see from the picture. It is one thousandth of a liter. One milliliter equals one thousand microliters. This means one microliter is one thousandth of a milliliter. A thousandth of this microscopic microliters make up one milliliter. Microliters are abbrevi abbreviated as mu L, Greek letter mu and capital L. To measure such minuscule volumes as microliters, we use micropipettes in the laboratories. To use micropipettes, you need a special training. I do not cover this technique in this video. To measure milliliters, we use graduated cylinders. Graduated cylinder has a narrow cylindrical shape. It's used in the laboratory for accurate, precise measurements of liquids. Each marked line on the graduated cylinder represents the amount of liquids that has been measured. A traditional graduated cylinder is usually narrow and tall, so as to increase the accuracy and precision of volume measurement. As you can see, the maximum this specific graduated cylinder can measure is 100 milliliters. Can you convert 100 milliliters to liters? What it be? You are correct if you say 0.1 liter. All you have to do is to divide 100 by 1000. Why? Because in one liter there are 1000 milliliters. Therefore, you simply can move decimal point to the left three times. Now, time to look at the beaker. Beaker is a cylindrical container with a flat bottom. Like graduated cylinders, most of the beakers also have a small spout or beak to aid pouring. Beakers are available in wide range of sizes, from one milliliter up to several liters. Like graduated cylinders, beakers are often graduated scaled. That is marked on the side with the lines indicating a liquid volume contained. On this slide, you see 500 milliliters beakers, which is half of a liter. But keep in mind that the marks on the beaker are not intended for obtaining a precise measurement of volume, but rather an estimation. Most beakers are accurate within approximately 10% only. One more interesting feature of the beaker you see on this slide. It has a mark that indicates that this beaker is thermoresistant, or another way to say it, heat resistant, meaning you can boil water or solutions in it. Often students think that this is the place to write a number of the beaker in the experiment or something else. It is not. Never write on this white mark. It is very hard to erase the note from there. You are to write with glass marker on the glass itself, not on the printed mark. Please keep this in mind. Now I want to go over how to read measured liquid in the graduated cylinder. Please note that water in the graduated cylinder forms concave meniscus. A meniscus is a curve on the surface of water when it touches glass. Water sticks to the edges of the glass container. This happens because molecules of water carry slightly negative and slightly positive charges, as well as glass molecules. And as you know, unlike charges, attract. This is why molecules of water get weakly attracted to the surface of the glass. Think of winter during or after the rain. The water sticks to the glass, correct? So the same here. 
Now remember one important rule. The correct reading of the volume is at the lowest point of the meniscus, not at the place where water sticks to the glass. So what is the volume of the water in this graduated cylinder? 34 milliliters, correct? One more thing, it is important to read the graduated cylinder from eye level. When you get to the eye level, you will read an accurate volume of water. In this case, 34 milliliters. If you are too high, you will read a bigger volume than there is. In this case, 35 milliliters. If you are too low, you will read a smaller volume than there is. In this case, 33 milliliters. This is a very important to remember when you make your measurements of water or different types of solutions. Now let's move with the units of mass. The average adult has a mass that is about 62 kilograms. Each kilogram equals 1000 grams. So how many grams will be in 62 kilograms? Is it a hard question to answer? Not really. No calculator needed. 62 kilograms are equal to 62,000 grams. But we never measure individuals in grams. Unless they are very small. As you can see, one gram is one thousandth of a kilogram. One gram equals one thousand milligrams. We measure milligrams to measure very tiny or very light things. Converting between units of mass is quite straightforward since it is all works on the scale of 1,000. Knowing that one gram is 1,000 milligrams, we divide the grams by 1,000 to find volume in grams. Thus, 3,000 milligrams are equal to 3 grams. And 300 milligrams are equal to 0.3 grams. And if you want to convert grams into kilograms, all you have to do is to divide grams by 1,000. 4,000 grams are equal to 4 kilograms. And 400 grams are equal to 0.4 kilograms. If you need to find out how many milligrams in grams or how many grams in kilogram, all you have to do is to multiply. I think you got the idea. For optimal health, the World Health Organization recommends consuming no more than six teaspoons of added sugar daily. By drinking just one serving a daily of Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Sprite, or any other sugary drinks, including juices with added sugar, a person will easily exceed this amount. Let's take a close look at this. Coca-Cola is just one example among many others. Reading the nutrition facts on the bottle of Coca-Cola, we learned that there are six servings in the bottle. To find out how many milliliters in one serving, all we have to do is to divide 2,000 milliliters. Remember, in the bottle there are two liters by six. So just in one serving, there is 333 milliliters. In two servings, there are 666 milliliters. 333 milliliters is somewhat a small cup of Coca-Cola. This relatively a small amount contains 39 grams of sugar. Keep in mind that one teaspoon of sugar equals 4.2 grams. To make it more visual, question, how many teaspoons of sugar per one serving? 39 divided by 4.2 is 9 teaspoons. This cup has 9 teaspoons of sugar. People who drink this type of drinks usually are not satisfied with just one cup because sugar is addictive. Usually they drink twice as much and even more, much more. So if one drinks uh, two cups of this soda, one consumes 18 teaspoons of sugar at once, three times more than recommended by World Health Organization per day. No wonder we have obesity epidemic in the United States. 
According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, as of 2003, obesity in the United States affects 100 million adults and almost 15 million children. But let's go back to our measurements. During the first day in the biology lab, students usually have a little exercise concerning measuring weight and volume using all kinds of scales. We will measure mass and volume of water today. Let's measure a mass of empty beaker first. It is about 11.7 grams. Now we will weight a beaker with some arbitrary volume of water. On the bigger graduation, you see that it is approximately 85 milliliters. To find out the mass of water, we simply subtract the mass of empty beaker with the mass of beaker with the water. We record this number since we will need them later on. Now let's weigh the empty graduated cylinder. Then we will pour all the water from the beaker to the graduated cylinder. Doing so, we will be able to find the precise volume of water. Tell me, what is it? You are correct if you say 86 milliliters. Remember, the correct reading of the volume is at the lowest point of the meniscus. Our first estimation of water volume was very close. By looking at the beaker, we estimated it is as 85 milliliters. Let's now find the mass of graduated cylinder with water. It is 101.75 grams. To find out mass of water in the graduated cylinder, we will subtract the mass of empty graduated cylinder from the mass of the graduated cylinder with the water, and we end up with 86 grams. Does this number ring the bell to you? Remember, the estimated volume of water was also 86, 86 milliliters. What does this mean? Pause the video and think for a while. This means, this means that one milliliter of water equals one gram and vice versa. One gram of water equals one milliliter of water. When we work in the laboratory with different types of solutions, we always have this on the back of our mind. Though, as you understand, different solutions will have different mass that will not be equal to the mass of water. Sea water, like the oceans, will have different mass per milliliter. It will depend on how much salt is dissolved in the water. Also keep in mind that one milliliter not always weights one gram. For water, this is true only at room temperature. The relationship between mass and volume is called density. It measures the amount of mass that fits in a given volume. Water has a density of one gram per milliliter. That is, one milliliter of water has a mass of exactly one gram. Have you ever tried mixing water with oil? You'll notice that the oil is floating above and the water stays below. This is because the oil has a lower density than water, about 0.91 gram per milliliter.